across the world that they all feel like home <laughs> and I just take my time and take my liberty. You see, when I was coming up here to shuck corn with Sister Sherwood, and we did, we, they got six bushels done. I don't know how much help I was because I kept having to leave to do things, but at least I was present to encourage while they worked, <laughs> and I was present to eat the corn. <laughs> yeah, that's important. But last night, God had given me some things I had to do when I came here. Once he had, once Brother Christ had said, no, you're not scooping out of here early Sunday morning and heading back to your house. You're coming to church. And by the way, you're preaching. Um, <laughs> God had told me on the way up here to stop at the overlook and to pray. On the way in, I stopped and prayed. And then we went out on the boat yesterday, as y'all know, because I posted the pictures. I don't think Sister Joyce knows her pictures out there yet. <laughs> she does. Okay. So we went out on the boat, and I really would have enjoyed going home with them and, and fellowshipping more because they're, they're family to me. And But the Lord told me I had to come last night to this building and to establish some things so that this morning the service would explode like it has. You saw me worship across the front this morning, but what you didn't see was last night after you and I met, I came in here, and God told me to scream and twirl through every eye at every place for his power, whatever I wanted to see. And all I could think of was in the Bible where he told the guy to shoot the arrows and he only shot three. And I thought, baby, I ain't shooting three. I'm going to scream until I ain't got a voice. laid on our altar. Right. Y'all know I'm diabetic. The Lord has put me on a fast since the beginning of August until the end of September. I'm not to eat from 11 p.m. at night until 1 p.m. in the afternoon. That means no water. That means nothing. No candy, no mints, nothing. And then he added clothes and shoes to it just for good measure. Just to make sure there was a real sacrifice there. And you know what? I went to the overlook this morning after I kneeled and prayed. I didn't kneel and pray that long. God told me to get up and sit on that stump. And I got up and I sat on that stump. And God said, feel the wind. My wind is blowing all around you right now. Just enjoy what you're feeling. Don't say a word. And so I sat there and I just enjoyed his presence. And then a few families pulled in. I'm just sitting on the stump, dress clothes up on the hillside in high heels. Really makes a statement. And um, I go climbing down the hillside as only a West Virginia hillbilly can do in high heels. 
you know, if you grew up in church, you know how to walk in high heels on any terrain. Right. Nothing stops you. So I come down that hillside sideways and God said, go tell them you'll take their picture all together. So I did. I said, hey, y'all want a picture together? Well, who's going to refuse that? And so I take their picture and I hold it up. I said, I sort of take pictures a few places and I took their pictures. And then I invited them to church. And then I go to leave and God says, back this car up to them and tell them I have a miracle for them. Oh, wow. And I went, well, okay. I've not done that before, but okay. So I backed the car and I said, hey, can I talk to you a minute? So one of them came over to the car and I said, ma'am, I don't know what you have need of. But I'm the evangelist at a church where we're having a moving in the miraculous event this morning. And God has told me to tell you that whatever it is you need, he's going to provide it. All right. And you need to come to church this morning to receive it. I said, I don't know what you're doing, but let me tell you, this isn't normal church. It's like a rock concert. <laughs> you see, you got you to entice them however you can. And so she said, thank you. And she was almost in tears when I pulled off. No, they're not here right now. But you know, we all have a journey to go on. But I doubt she will forget my words right. just simply because I obeyed God. Right. And to walk in the miraculous, right. it's time for us to obey God when he says, well, talk to that person. I know that there are many of you sitting here that have never seen a miracle, has never felt a miracle. So therefore, it's hard for you to believe that there is such a thing. I know that those sitting here that have never completely lived for me to feel the freedom I can give you, that have never turned to me and thought that things would just came out just because they did. I want you to understand, I don't care who it is, my love is the same for everyone. I want to bless everyone. And I am stronger than your beliefs. I am stronger than your problems. I am stronger than your needs. I am stronger. I have all the power. It is true you live in this world full of heartache. But don't forget that I am not here with you. Do not forget that I seek you every day. Don't forget that each time you whisper my name, I am so glorified. Do not forget that I have made you to love me and serve me. Don't forget that nothing, nothing can stop me if you say, do it. Wow. Let's praise the Lord. And if I would title this this morning, it would be a call to changed heart to move in the miraculous. All right. This is not per se to the sinner. This is to the church. All right. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, then thou, 
Then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelza, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place, with a psaltery, and a tabret, and a pipe, and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with thee. Thou shalt be turned into. And Jill and Clint, thou shalt be turned into another man, or another Amen. woman. That's what God has done today. And there are many here who need that same promise today. Amen. Let me go on. And let it be, when these signs are came, come unto thee, that thou do as the occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings, and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Yep. Another heart. It's already started. Heart transplants have already started right here on the front row. Yeah, right. And every single one of us need a heart transplant this morning. We need a fresh awakening and we need a new convert like spirit that will become the best soul winners that the world has ever seen. Let me go on. And it was so. Or hang on. Um, and they and seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Verse 9. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came hither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Now let's get down to verse 25. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. And there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Brother Christ, God's raising up another group of men today whose hearts he is touching in this service Amen. to go with you, men and women. Amen. Because in the Bible tells me there's neither male nor female. Right. So God's raising up men and women in this day. Absolutely. Because women minister differently than men. Yes. We see things they don't see. Yeah. They're a little dense. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah, he still loves me. Um, so we, we, have to, we have to understand that. We minister differently than they do. Okay? So let me go on. Verse 27, but the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. One more verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. For a great door yep. and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Many adversaries. Yes. Pastor, if you pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> Lord, we stand here right now in your presence. We stand under the canopy of your glory that is in this tabernacle. And I pray now in the name of Jesus, you would use my sister as an oracle of the Lord to speak what thus saith the Lord to the church. I pray, God, you would use her for your glory. And God, open the ears of this congregation to not only hear, but to receive. In Jesus' name, everyone shout, Amen. 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 It's been a long time since I walked away from the pulpit with no notes, but I know better than to do what I want to do, which is carry that iPad with me. You see, we've got to understand some things. When we're anointed of God, that does not change us. Our hearts have to be changed. And I'm afraid for some of us who've been raised in the church that we've never had a heart change. God has never, we've never really allowed him to have free reign in our heart with what we do and how we love and where we go and who we touch. Yes, it's COVID, but Jesus touched the lepers. I'm sorry, I believe he'll keep me. You see, I was on a plane from Africa for 20 some hours with people I didn't know and I 
because of the asthma, because of coughing. Have I been sick? Well, I've had a heart condition that they couldn't figure out what it was, but we finally figured out it was the devil because all the tests came back negative. I mean, the doctor's still seeing me, and I'm still scheduled to have more blood work later this month, September. But when we figured out what it was, and when I was in Virginia at the beginning of this month to preach the first Moving in the Miraculous event with my friend, Sister Shaw, I was sitting there in excruciating pain that Sunday morning, the last service, and I was supposed to deliver the last message. And I didn't know if I could stand up. I was 911 Jesus. Yeah. Hello, Jesus. Am I preaching this morning? If I am, you need to do something for me. You need to touch my body. I need a healing touch. Yeah. One of the young ministers walked up to me. I'll never forget it. He was so scared. Brother, I think his name's Brother Hulu. I get his name always confused. He walks up to me and he says, Sister Smith, and he was half afraid. God told me to ask you a question. And I said, well, ask it. <laughs> and he said, have I ever failed you yet? Oh. I was like, great, Jesus, you just slapped me and I get to get up and preach. <laughs> Could we have done this later? But I stood up. And I went to James chapter 4 before I preached. And I told what he did. You see, God has to make me, he has to really humble me really good in front of everybody. It's not good unless it's really good. And so I called for all the elders of the church. And I said, I need prayer. And they laid their hands on me and they prayed for me. Guess what? Haven't had chest pain since. Not one. of Lake Charles and West Lake and all that. I've been on the phone all weekend. You can ask the Sherwoods with conference calls, with public officials, with FEMA, with the UPCI officials, trying to get things lined up, trying to find me a place to stay. Couldn't find a place to stay. Couldn't get the one person to call me back. I knew we'd have a, at least a couch or a floor I could sleep on. And uh, you see, but I didn't feel that I was going. But I was, God didn't say no, but he didn't say yes. And then when that came out of my mouth and we were walking to the car and I said, well, let's discuss this. I followed through. It was like, I, it was like God was pushing me. And I'm like, I've been pretty bold. I probably just killed it. And uh, that night when I came by the church to pray, he met me in the parking lot and he said, I've heard from God. Yep. And uh, I said, before we announce anything, I've got to talk to my pastor. Sure. Because... He knows about the Reach Out America, and he's my pastor, and I've submitted fully to him these days. I'm not the old Susie who would do it and ask for forgiveness later. You know? There are times I have to do that because of the situation I'm in, but I have an agreement with my pastor. As long as I let him know, as soon as I can, we're good. So I texted him. A long text. And normally it takes days sometimes to get a response because he's got a church of like 1,200 people. I mean, he's got a lot of people pulling on him. Within a minute, my phone did. Stay where you are. Four words. Four words. Stay where you are. Talk about confirmation. That was the Lord. That's how you move in the miraculous. You don't know how you're going to walk on the water, but you walk on the water. You see, seven weeks ago, I was sitting in my house because as an evangelist, when you're not preaching, you're not making any money. There's nothing coming in, and bills still come. The light company still wants paid. If you want to eat, the grocery store won't hand you the food for no money. And so I'm sitting there having this conversation with God, Brother Bowden, and I'm like, I'm healthy. I can make six figures, Lord. All I have to do is make a few well-placed phone calls. And the Lord walked in my living room and said, what? Is my provision not good enough for you? 
and, and PayPal and things and yeah. went to the mailbox and there was something in the mailbox. I had more than I needed because that's how God does things. Yes, it does. See, I'm here to increase your faith. I'm here to tell you how God will do it for you. But I'm also here to tell you how stupid we can be. See, a few weeks later, I'm sitting in that same refinery in my living room having that same conversation with God. And I'm like, God, preaching twice a month ain't cutting. That's just, I mean, I do have a small other income. I said, but Lord, we need a little more money. You told me to remodel this house while I was sitting here not doing anything. So, Lord, there needs to be a more influx of cash into this situation. I didn't call anybody. I didn't ask anybody for money. I talked to him. And then I did something stupid, like Abraham and Sarah did. You see, they were waiting on Isaac. They settled for Ishmael. And I almost settled for the wrong thing. I applied for a job. They called and interviewed me within a few days. They offered me the job. I accepted the job. I called my pastor to talk to him before I started work. And he explained to me why there are so many ministers sitting on benches. And then he talked to me about when the apostles said I go fishing. He preached me a message that Saturday afternoon for just about 15 minutes as only Somebody who was raised under Brother Kilgore could do in that brotherly manner. He said, Susie, you can't do that. Everybody knows you're walking on the water with Jesus. And we can't have you not walk on the water with Jesus. So you've got to keep walking on the water. I don't care how hard the waves come and how hard they crash. God will provide for you. And so I sat. Nothing changed. When I was here in May, remember I told you I felt something break? Yeah. Well, this weekend I knew for a fact it broke. When I got here and I heard some of the things that have been happening around here. But there's more that has to break. Right. Yeah. You see? And we've got to understand the anointing. We've got to go past the anointing. It's not enough to be anointed. No. Amen. We need to go to the Shekinah glory of God. Oh. That means we wait in His presence. That means when He tells us to go to the church and pray. sit by them. Oh, I can't look at them. Oh, I can't touch them. God, you want me to do what? Do you realize I could get COVID if I do that? And I'm not saying to disrespect the rules the church has set up. We have to have those rules in place. Those have to be in place. We have to honor those. We have to be submitted to those. Please don't take me wrong. Okay? But what I'm telling you is it's time we start obeying God on a whole new level. This day this generation demands the church wake up. COVID should have woke you up. There's only one other time in history the whole world was shut down. And that's when God destroyed the world. The days of Noah's Ark. Do you not realize what has happened in the world? Do you not realize what the devil's trying to do? If the church will stand up and be the church and not back down. I got news for you. He ain't got no power. Because as I screamed and I danced last night, the devil tried to get me to throw up every time I did it. And I'd stop and I'd point. And I'd say, Satan, we've already had this conversation. And I don't need to have it again. In Jesus' name, I'm not going to throw up. And in Jesus' name, I'm going to keep having voice and I'm going to keep screaming. Because I know every time I scream, God's doing something for somebody in this church. God's breaking something and providing something for people in this church. It's time to away to what God wants to do. It's the crazy stuff. Go ahead. Say your little now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Go ahead. Let me know how that works for you. When you're rushing your baby to the hospital in the middle of the night. Or when you're standing by an ICU bed of somebody you love and they're dying. Let me know how well those prayers work for you. No, we need to be face first in the carpets. It takes travail. It takes crazy worship. 
And you know what the Bible tells me? I, could, I didn't think to look up the scripture. Y'all can look it up later. Judah goes first. Yep. You know why praise has to go first? Because praise is what breaks the enemy's back. So we need to pray to break the enemy's back. Somebody's cancer fell off back there during worship service. We need more of that. We need to not know what's going to happen. We need it to be so exciting that when we tell people, you need to come to church with me, it's like a rock concert. And then Jesus does his thing on top of it. And baby, when they let Jesus loose, look out. That's how exciting we got to be. And some of us have been in church so long. When we invite somebody to church, we walk up to you and say, would you like to come to church with me? I wouldn't want to cross the street with them. <laughs> no, you got to say, hey, I'd love for you to come to church with me. Baby, it's like a rock concert. And let me tell you something. There's going to be miracle signs and wonders. Jesus is going to heal people today. And i got news for you. He's got a miracle for you today, too. I don't know what you need, but I know a God who will supply it. And I mean he will in Jesus' name. <laughs> excitement and that passion again. Right. We've got to move in the miraculous. Yeah. But to move yeah. in the miraculous, yeah. we've got to be right with God. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I went there. <laughs> I went there. Because God deals with me every day. You know all those crazy blogs I post? I know most of you follow me on Facebook. That's God talking to me. And after he talks to me, I have to go repent. Because he shined a light on another part of me that I haven't let him see. But you see, I want him to see it. I want him to change me. I want to be moved to new levels with him. I want to walk in places I've never walked with him. If the waves crash, I just want to study myself and look at him. And say, okay, there come the waves. You're God. You told me to follow you, so what are you going to do about these waves? And then God just takes care of him. Because he's God. But you see, we hold him off because we don't want the strange. We don't want to be tarred with that brush. Well, I got news for you, baby. You're already tarred with that brush. People already know where you go to church. So why not prove them right? Why not pray for somebody on the streets of Oakland in front of the courthouse? spirits into our souls and you have to be taught how to eradicate those spirits from your souls and the Bible teaches us everything but you see we're not in it enough I know I wasn't until I had cancer you know a near death experience gets you really right with God I don't want any of you to have to go through what I went through to find God the way I found you now most of you have a surface relationship. And even those of you that give tongues and interpretations, please know I respect you and I love you very much. But there's a place much deeper and with much more wisdom God wants to take you. Right. So let me read. 1 Samuel 16, 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. An evil spirit from God, not from the devil. An evil spirit from God troubled him. You make those decisions, you're not going to talk to Jesus. He said an evil spirit troubled you. 
what the book says. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Now let's skip down to verse 22 of that same chapter. And Saul said to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Right. Music's important. Sure. It soothes the soul. Yeah. Some of us can't handle it loud, and God deals with us in other ways. But when I'm in my car, for those that have ridden in my car with me, you know it's cranked. As loud as it is, isn't it, Elijah? It's cranked up there so we can hear what they're saying. And, though, and my friend Teresa, she was here this morning, she's traveled with me for weeks. And she knows, she's watched me curl up in a ball and travail in the front seat of that car. Scared her half to death when I started screaming. We were traveling, traveling through Boston and God was letting me feel the burden of the people. The burden of their sins, the burden of their pain, the burden of their hurts. When's the last time you felt the burden of the pain of the people in Garrett County? In the time. If we want God to move. In the time. Quit making excuses. Learn how to let God move on us. Quit playing church. Quit playing with the fire of sin. That the devil's putting in front of us. Because when you're young. The devil will place all kinds of stuff in front of you. Your hormones are raging. And you'll do something stupid. And then you think God can't use you. I got news for you. He's a God of restoration. He's a God that will restore and He will take you back. He will put you where you once were. He will refresh you. And He will release you from those chains that you placed willingly upon your own soul and upon your own life. We don't need the devil to put chains on us. We just need Him to walk by and let us see something flashy. And we follow Him. And we chain ourselves. Chains are going to be broken today that you thought could never be broken. For what God is wanting to do in this area, this has to happen. If you walk out of here this morning and you don't let it happen, you know what's going to happen? The revival is going to walk right behind you. And it's going to go to another church down the road. Might go to the Baptist or the Methodist. They might read Acts 238 and find out they need to be baptized in Jesus' name. But if the church of the name of Jesus don't get with it, he will pass us by. He will go to the ones who are hungry. Like that boy, Imano, in uh, Virginia. I, I walked and I preached with him arm in arm a few weeks ago. He, he's only been in church a couple of months now, I think, something like that. A year ago, he had OD'd on drugs. He's 16 years old. Not been raised in church. No religious background. And when he was in the hospital, an Episcopalian priest came and saw him. So he got in the Episcopalian church. And then Brother Woods felt led of God to do a grocery giveaway. And his wife said, why are we doing a grocery giveaway? He said, I don't know, but the Lord said to give away groceries. So a man got the groceries. A man came to church. A man who got the Holy Ghost. A man who got baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. You see, that's what's wrong with those of us raised in the church. We stopped when we got the Holy Ghost. It's time for us to wake up and move. The Bible says in the book of Acts, and they continued steadfastly in the God doctrine. It's time for us to continue steadfastly. Every single one of us have the ability to lay hands on people and they be healed instantly. As long as we say these words, in the name of Jesus, I command. And we have that authority and ability within us. But we don't take it. We don't use it because we are afraid. We have not continued steadfastly in the gospel for years. Decades. You want to attend some funerals? You know I have. You want to stand at some caskets and wonder why? Like I have? God had to take me some mighty little places to wake me up. 
I don't want God to take you to those places. I'm begging you this morning to wake up. I'm begging you to find that place and then to be consistent in that place every single day. You've got to do it every single day. It doesn't matter what you feel like. Some days I don't want to pray. I'm like, oh, really, Jesus? I'm tired. Can I sleep? And as I wrestle myself out of the bed and get up, and I go to pray, or I go to sit in the recliner where I listen as he talks to me. You see, prayer is not all about his talk, and we've got to reach the place where we can hear his voice, where he can speak to us through his word. That's walking in the miraculous, or moving in the miraculous. You see, I don't just want to walk in it, I want to run in it. I want to leap to great heights with him in it. You see, I, I'm not, I, I'm greedy these days. God's done so many miracles since I've been home from Africa, so many financial miracles, so many other miracles, that I'm sorry, Brother Christ, but I'm standing there, if you get in my way, I'll knock you down. But I'm getting to Jesus. And I'm getting my miracle. Ain't nobody going to stop me. Ain't nobody going to change what the Lord wants to do with me. I'm going to keep what he has. Because it's more important today than it's ever been. That's our closing. And then we're going to get ready to do the prayer. Um, when we were in D.C. and I picked Sister Shaw up at the airport, we were driving to our hotel. We hadn't been together in a while. We're best of friends. Our schedules don't allow us to even have phone conversations very often. And uh, we just texted for me to find out when to pick her up. And so we're on our way. And she says, you know, Susie, I prayed for the Lord to release me from this. But he wouldn't. And I said, well, you, you know how far we are from the Capitol at our hotel? She goes, no, how far? I said, 15 minutes. I said, I think we're supposed to go pray there. And she says, oh, Jesus. And she started shaking. And she goes, you just don't know what you just said. She goes, I just got approved from, through Brother Bernard to take a court group to the Capitol to pray. Wow. Praise God. Wow. Praise God. And then, at the same time, her phone did. It was Brother Marco, who's the Maryland, D.C. prayer coordinator. When Jesus lines it up, he leaves no doubt. And then, we were calling people to try to get people to D.C. quick that we knew were part of our core group. And I'm sitting in the thing, and her phone died. She goes, can you call Sister Margaret? Sister Margaret Banks. So I called Sister Margaret. And Sister Margaret says, well, where are you? I said, I'm in Virginia. She goes, I'm in Virginia. I said, no, you're not. You live in New York City. She said, I am in Virginia. Where are you at? I said, well, we're preaching in Woodbridge. She said, well, my husband has a house there. So she was at church that Sunday afternoon, and she taught how to walk and pray because we were taking the church of new converts to walk and pray around the Capitol. Let me tell you what's happened to our country in closing to build up to, we're going to do that witchcraft prayer again today. And the reason we're doing it is because witchcraft is the number one religion in the United States of America. And if you don't know it, you put your head in the sand. It's time for the church to be the church and rise to the occasion. That spirit has come against this church multiple times through witches. And we're going to take dominion today. Amen. The dominion that we've already been given. You see, we already have the authority. I watched a man in Canada cast out demons one night. They wanted me to go help, but I, I was too tired. I said, I think you've got enough preachers. Surely to God they can cast out some little devils. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to sit here. And I watched him clean. He had his hand in his pocket. And he was real quiet. I could barely hear him. And he looked at this woman and he said, In the name of Jesus, I command the demon of rebellion to leave. You have no power. Leave in Jesus' name. And you know what I watched? I watched that demon leave. It didn't require yelling because he knew who he was. He knew what he had. And he knew how to exercise it. For too long, uh, we've known sort of what we have, but we haven't really clued into it. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know who we are. Do we realize that when the name of Jesus was placed on us in baptism, when we walk, we are acting as Jesus right. and have the same rights and abilities that the Lord Jesus Christ has That's if he was walking right. on this earth? Right. Amen. When a general gives a private a letter, that private is no longer acting as a private. Is that true for those that have been in the military? He's acting as that general. And he's delivering 
back to wherever he's going. It's the same principle. But the church has not caught on. They've not woke up. You need to wake up today. Jesus wants to do some amazing things. Brother Christ, Sister Christ, the ministry team and I can't be everywhere. We don't touch the people you touch. We can't pray for the people you pray for. We can't do it. But if you'd start laying hands on them, if you'd start, the Lord would start healing them in front of you, and you're going to stand there and go, I can't, there's no way I saw what I just saw. There's no way I watched what happened just happen. There's no way God let me be part of what he just did. Because we'll never see ourselves the way Jesus sees us. He doesn't see us as we are today. But he sees us as we will be. When I was running from the call of God all those years. And then laying in that hospital bed for those years. God didn't see me where I was. He saw me where he was going to take me. He saw me what he was going to do with me. He saw me going around the world in his name. Praying for people and then being healed. He saw me touching people and demons coming out. He didn't see me as a little girl from Phillipsville, West Virginia. Who they still don't have running water to take a shower. You can bathe in the house, but there's not a shower or a tub. There is a tub, but mom's got it full of clothes. <laughs> that apple didn't fall far from the tree. Um, so what I'm telling you is, I see me as that little girl from West Virginia, from the hills, who was picked on even at church camp. Because I didn't have the right last name and I wasn't a preacher's daughter. All right. And then when I would travail, the people I went to church with looked at me strange because I was a little girl, nine, ten years old. Nine, ten year old kids don't do that. Really? I've seen some four year olds travail and they've put me to shame. It's time for the adults to lead by example. Amen. It's time for us to worship by example. That's right. When I was shouting across the front, some of you older ones that might not be able to twirl and dance like I did, you could walk and raise your hands. That's right. You could do something. do something. Shouldn't be sitting on your hands. We want a move of God. It's going to take us getting out of our comfort zones and doing it and right. moving with God. Very Very We're getting ready to do the witchcraft prayer. And after we're done, God's going to release, refresh, and as soon as I get my iPad open, I'll tell you the last word because it escapes me. Restore. God will re release, refresh, and re restore. And what we're going to do is Brother Kreitz and Sister Kreitz and I are going to be right here on the platform. He's getting her. We're going to set a chair over here for, for your mom, Elijah. And then we're going to ask the leaders to go to every door. Uh, Brother Pete and Brother Bowers, if you'll stay where you're at, if the others that can move will move to doors, we need two at every door that's a minister. Okay? Two at every door. And that includes the front doors that open. You know, I've done this before. But what we need to show you, because to do these types of things, there has to be unity. And there's unity between Brother and Sister Christ and myself. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's right. So we're going to bind together, and I'm going to pray this prayer, and they're just going to pray with me as I pray it. But the Lord is going to start to move in this building. Now it's up to you what you want. But once again, we're giving the devil notice. That's right. And ever so often, you have to revisit things, and you have to remind him that he may have slipped in through another way. But we're going to open the doors. So that he has free access to leave. Because he's not welcome. In any way, form, or fashion. Okay? Brother Zimmerman and Brother Hinkle, if you'll go to the very, the doors that open to the outdoors. Brother Claypool and you, if one of you will go to each of those doors and maybe get your wives with you, okay? Since there's not enough men to go around. Brother Pete uh, and Brother Bauer will back us up on the platform all right. as we do this. And I'm sorry, I know I've gone over. Um, but I feel like the Lord wanted this done this morning. All right. And I have to obey Him. 
Let's all stand. I don't know what you need this morning. The pastor's going to preach after me. And you see, if you're not hungry for God, you'll leave after this. But if you're hungry for God, you're going to stay. Because there's going to be more miraculous things happen after pastor gets to the point. Okay? I've been pretty quiet because the Lord wanted me to teach. And I hope you've got something from this that you can take home and it will sure. change your life. Okay? Because it's time our lives were changed. So, I'm going to try to hold this. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I find the spirit of the wizard, all native witchcraft spirits and all other territory of witchcraft spirits. I renounce the religious spirit, the spirit of unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, anger, hate, and spite, the root of bitterness and malice, and any other hindering spirits in our lives. We lose peace, purpose, forgiveness, happiness, love, and acceptance. I bind the third eye of the mediums and their physical, psychic, and spiritual attacks against us and all that concerns us. Every assignment, operation, work, plan, activity, trap, and snare is bound and blocked from our personal, family, business, and ministry affairs. All curses, hexes, vexes, bewitchments, enhancements, cantrips, ligatures, judgments of witches, and warlocks and acts of evil are cursed to the root. Witchcraft, sorcery, magic, candle magic, potion magic, black magic, white magic, contagious magic, and omens have no power at working against my assignments in life. New Age, Santeria, the Masons, Yoruba forces cannot penetrate our areas of protection. Lord Jesus, every working of a curse, ritual, or sacrifice to Satan is counted as null and void. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ against every act and declare that no weapon formed against us will prosper. All demonic thoughts, threats, mental locutions, statements, and ideations are cast down and will not become strongholds for the devil's use. I renounce all self-inflicted curses through negative confession, imagery, and magnification that we may have opened the doors to. I cancel every demonic strategy against me and the ones we are called to be connected with, covered by, or called to cover. They will never manifest or come to pass and are cursed and destroyed at their root. I render them of no effect. They are judged by God, spoiled, and put to open shame. Every plan of the enemy will never be seated into my life and take root. No weapons formed against us will prosper. As soon as the enemy attacks, the reinforcements of the Lord will be launched against him and his seed dried up. I cast down every vain imagination. It is broken off in our ministries, its people and families immediately, completely and permanently. We mirror back every curse sin against us up to and including death. Also shine our light into their darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Let's worship God.